Washington Journal continues. Joining us from Denver is Nick Troiano. He is the executive director of the Centrist Project. And we're dividing our phone lines between Republicans, Democrats, and self-described centrists. So we welcome your calls in just a moment. What is your project? How did it begin? What's the mission statement? Well, thanks for the opportunity to be here, Steve. And first, I want to say that our thoughts are obviously with the people of Florida as they prepare for the landfall of Hurricane Irma, and obviously also, too, with the people of Texas in the recovery of Hurricane Harvey. We've definitely seen the best of America on display these past couple weeks, not only with first responders and their courage and bravery, but also with ordinary Americans who are stepping forward to help their neighbors and complete strangers without regard to their partisan leanings or political affiliation. And those are the values that truly make our country great, but those are the values absent from political life today, especially among our political leaders. And the result is that we face a true crisis of governance uh, with this great divide in our country. The American people know it. When Gallup asked them what their top concern was, they didn't say the economy or health care. They said dissatisfaction with governance. And when our own Secretary of Defense, uh, General Jim Mattis, was asked what is the biggest threat facing our country today, he said, quote, the lack of political unity in America. So that's the threat. It isn't the proverbial wolf at the door. It is the termites in the basement of our country that is going to prevent us not only from reaching our full potential, but from being able to address any challenge at home or abroad. And so that's why the centrist project exists, to improve governance. And in our view, we believe it's going to take electing centrist independent candidates to office to help unite the country, to be the bridge builders between two sides that seem to be moving further and further apart. And so the centrist project imagines a government, a government uh, that is representative of the people, not the parties or special interests, that is about conciliation and cooperation rather than conflict, and that's rooted in public service and not self-interest. And that's why we're working hard this cycle to recruit independent candidates across the country from state legislature uh, to the U.S. Senate uh, who can represent that viewpoint of the 45 percent of Americans right now who don't consider themselves to be Democrats or Republicans and the many more who are dissatisfied with both parties. Well, let me follow up on that point, because based on that 40 or 45 percent who describe themselves as centrist or independents or uh, middle of the road, moderates, however you want to describe them, only a fraction of state legislators are independents. So why such a big disparity between that number and the reality of who's elected? Well, you're right. We have over 7,000 state, uh, state legislators in our country. 25 are independent. Out of 535 members of Congress, two are independent. And that's because both parties that don't agree on much do agree on one thing, and it's to make it difficult for a new competition. And so they've rigged the rules in their own favor, from everything from getting on the ballot to how independents can raise money. And that's really why the Centrist Project exists, because we're the only organization for the first time building the brand and network and infrastructure necessary to help independent candidates run competitive campaigns so that it isn't just every independent figuring this out for themselves who want to run, but that we can house that institutional knowledge and the support structure uh, to give them the resources they need to compete. And that's how we aim to sort of bridge that gap between the 45 percent of Americans who are independent uh, and the opportunity to elect many more to, uh, to office. And the opportunity we see as a true hack to the two-party system is focusing on narrowly divided legislatures where just a handful of independents can actually deny both parties an outright majority and then use that leverage to force compromise and force cooperation between both sides and to help find common ground. In the U.S. Senate today, which is divided roughly 52-48 between those who caucus with Republicans and Democrats respectively, just three independents can be that centrist coalition. And you can imagine on any issue, particularly health care, for example, those that coalition in the center being able to find where the common ground exists and to broker agreements. Because what we've seen over the last 20, 30 years is that that middle has fallen out of our legislature. You know, you go back 40 years ago, you had 290 members of the House and 29 members of the Senate who e existed between the most liberal Republican and the most conservative Democrat. They were there in the middle. By 2011, the center fell out. There's no overlap anymore. So there's a real need and opportunity for some centrist independents to exist in that space to help find the common ground and get big things done. If you consider yourself a centrist, here's the number, 
Stephen is one of them from Wyndham, Connecticut. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I, I think centrist and pragmatist are probably pretty close. I, I you know, I'm, I don't agree with everything the president says. I think sometimes, some, you know, I don't follow politics every single day, so sometimes the reports are are a little over the top in my view. But I think his, um, you know, he's been fought so much by the extreme of his own party that when he cut a deal with the Democrats, it was it it wasn't a victory for them, but for the people, you know, it was a great victory for the people. And and I think the president is going to have to play that middle road. I think that's where his success lies. And, you know, he made his bones as a builder. There's two things he could really accomplish, tax reform and infrastructure. And, And I think that pragmatist central road is where he could really have success. Stephen, thank you for the call. Nick Troiano, your response. I agree. I mean, that's what really what defines being a centrist is being a pragmatist. It is about putting country before party. Uh, it is about following the facts, using reason and common sense to solve problems, uh, and about working with others to actually get things done. And we've seen a little bit about, of that this week uh, with the president working with Democratic leaders on a deal to raise the debt ceiling and provide some emergency relief to, these, uh, to the hurricane. But truly, our hope is that bipartisanship exists not just to avoid narrowly crises or to do things like emergency funding, but to tackle some big issues. Uh, the caller was right. Tax reform, infrastructure are among them. Both parties have said we need to get these things done. Uh, unfortunately, in the political climate in which we exist, Uh, Both parties are more focused on winning elections than in actually governing. We have two opposition parties right now, uh, each focused on the zero-sum game of politics, trying to maximize and maintain their own political power. And so in that environment, nothing productive is getting done, which is why we need some true independence uh, to bridge the divide and, and make sure that we can come to find some common ground on these big issues. Our guest ran as an independent in Pennsylvania's 10th congressional district, getting about 22,000 votes. Where did you go to college and where is home? Well, I'm from Milford, uh, Pennsylvania, and I went to school in D.C. I graduated from Georgetown University uh, studying government, and it was in my time in D.C. where I saw the gap between what I was learning in school, this amazing system of government, that our founders created and what was happening down the street at the White House and in Congress, uh, where some of the worst fears of our founders are now being realized. I mean, Washington warned us against the mischiefs of faction in his farewell address. He said it would distract the public councils and feeble the public administration, cause ill-founded jealousies and false alarms and open us up to foreign influence. It's obvious all of those things are coming true today. Uh, John Adams said that he feared nothing greater under our Constitution and division of our republic into two great parties concerning measures in opposition to each other. And so I began while I was in school to realize that our country is in some deep trouble uh, with these two political parties that are each moving to their extremes and something new had to be done. Uh, And the good news is I think both the resiliency of the American people to, to want something new and the new technology at our fingertips can help bring that Uh, into reality, uh, especially in this current age. I mean, we've seen it abroad, what just happened in France, where they elected a centrist independent, not only to the presidency, but a few months later, swept a supermajority of seats in the parliament. Change can happen fast, especially if there's the right catalyst. And we believe that can happen with the right independent candidates in 2018. Already a few are running. You have Terry Hayes, who's running for governor in Maine as an independent. You have Bill Walker, who's the country's only independent governor, running for re-election in Alaska. Uh, These are the leaders that I believe will help catalyze a new movement uh, in our politics to not only tap into the anger and frustration that's in the electorate, clearly, as we've seen in 2016, but channel it in very productive and positive ways rather than the very divisive and destructive ways that we see right now. Our guest is the executive director of the Centrist Project, Nick Troiano, who is joining us from Denver. Alton is joining us from Pride, Louisiana, also on our line for Centrist. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my st- my statement or whatever you know you want to call it 
is that people like myself, who is a, you know, I am a centrist, and I, I am so worried about the Democrats and the Republicans, all they worry about is winning back their seat. They they want to win. That's the, they don't care about the United States of America, especially not the working class people of the United States. And they need until they get back to voting for what's good for the United States of America, we, the working class, are in trouble. All they do is vote for the rich. And I would like to make one comment, if you don't mind, about to the person from Vermont who said that the training programs are not offered to him, but, but they are offered to the immigrants. The main thing, I worked in the construction industry for 45 years, and I traveled all over the United States, worked in 30 states. Uh, and most people in the United States will not travel to a job. They want the job to come to their hometown. So there's jobs in the United States that American citizens will not get up and go to, and that's why you have to have immigrants. So anyway... That's my statement. Thank you very much. Alton, thanks for the call. And while you were phoning in, we also got this tweet from another viewer who says, I agree. When both party voters started kicking out moderates, things stopped being done. Nick Troiano, your response to what Alton said in Louisiana and the comment from this viewer. Well, I think the underlying point that Alton made is that the true enemy we face is not the other side. It's actually the status quo. If you look at big problems that we face from our growing national debt to our changing climate, the worst thing we can do is nothing. And that's a decision. And that's what we're doing today. I mean, take the debt as an example, uh, as an issue. $20 trillion we're in debt almost today. If we do nothing, that will grow by $10 trillion over the next decade. If we do nothing by 2025, Medicare's trust fund runs empty. By 2030, Social Security's trust fund runs empty. And if we wait that decade to take any action, we will have to, the necessary tax increases will be 50% more or the necessary spending cuts will be 50% less according to the Congressional Budget Office. So there's a real cost of inaction. And so we have to realize that we might not get 100% of what we want, but getting 80% and working with the other side to find some solutions is really the imperative of government today. The underlying problem is that there are powerful people and powerful interests that profit from this polarization. You have media that uh, seize on this to drive their ratings. You have issue groups that polarize us to raise money. You have politicians who polarize us to get more votes. And it works out well for them. But it's not working out well for the people, as the caller pointed out. I mean, Congress has a 15% approval rating, but 90% of them get reelected. Uh, it's really dependent on us to realize that it, we can't just keep sending Democrats and Republicans back to Washington and expecting things to change. In fact, it's only getting worse. We'll go to Ted next in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Democrats line. Good morning. Um, yes, I'm a Jill Stein supporter. I just gave up on the, the Democratic Party. I got disillusioned after the election when, you know, Hillary was thrust on us. You know, I supported Bernie Sanders. Um, I disagree with you because I think instead of the centrist, what we need is progressive policies, you know, like single-payer universal health care, free colleges, marijuana legalization. Most people support these policies. You know, we, the corporations own both corrupt parties and our media. So if we're going to try to find a middle ground, either we do one of two things. Either we try to get the liberals, progressives, into like Bernie Sanders, Nina Turner, Tulsi Gabbard, get them to replace the corporate Democrats, or we try to start a third party with Jill Stein. Now, the Democratic Party has a, a rule with the, the superdelegates, which is very unfair. So the, the Democratic Party is basically corrupt like the Republicans and corporate owned. I don't think that we can really work within the party. I think we need to start a third party with Jill Stein and the Green Party, or, like I said, clean house in the Democrats and get progressives in there, like Bernie Sanders and, you know, in Tulsi Gabbard and Nina Turner and others. So I, I would like your guest to comment on this. You know, how can we save... How can we work within the two-party duopoly that's corporate-owned with our media and expect it to, to make changes unless we do one of the other two things that I said? Ted, thank you. We'll get a response. Nick Troiano. Well, I agree with you, Ted, that we can't work within the current two-party duopoly. Each side has their own special interests that they're beholden to, that they raise money from. 
uh, that they're responsive to instead of being for the people. And that's why we think we need to elect independent candidates to actually represent uh, the people. You know, in my view, I think most Americans aren't on the extreme left or the extreme right. And that uh, with the rise of democratic socialism on one side and populist nationalism on the other, that the center left and center right ought to realize they have more in common with each other than the base of either party. And that something new has to be grown from the middle out. But what independents share first and foremost in common is not ideology. It is an approach to governance about putting the people first, not the parties or special interests, and actually working together to solve problems. The two-party system can work, but it requires both parties to work together, and we're not seeing that today. We have seen it in the past when we passed Social Security and Medicare, the highway bill, welfare reform, even a balanced budget is when both sides were able to come together and find some agreement. We're not seeing it today. That's why it requires some new competition, some new innovation in politics. I mean, we're surrounded by innovation in every aspect of our lives, not in politics, not yet. Uh, that's why we think the opportunity is primed for it. I mean, the youngest of our two parties is 160 years old. Uh, they're antiquated, they're out of touch. What's amazing to me is in their both parties' platforms that were pl passed in 2016, neither mention the phrases artificial intelligence or automation. I mean, these are the big trends that will be shaping our economy in the years to come. And neither party is talking about it. They're focusing on issues that can turn out their base and divide us instead of being oriented to the future and what can unite us. From Essex, England, Barbara is next. Good morning on the Republican line. Oh, good morning. Nick, um, how are you going to get the centrists to um, change what's going on at the moment. When you get these people in, how are you going to have the, um, the people in the country listen to them? Donald Trump is for all the people, and I want to know why the Democrats won't pass his bills when he's fighting for all the people, Democrats, Republicans, and so forth. Why won't they give him a chance? Barbara, thank you. We'll get a response. Well, let me take the first part of your question and, and point you to a couple of examples of how centrist independents have been able to make a difference. Uh, in 2016, there was a candidate named Jason Gren uh, who became so uh, ticked off at the failure of the Alaska State Legislature to deal with their large budget deficit that he decided to run for office and decided to do so as an independent. And he wound up defeating the Republican incumbent uh, by less than 200 votes in his district. He went to the state legislature and helped form a coalition of what became two independents, three moderate Republicans, and the House Democrats to form a bipartisan governing majority. And they have been successful in the session this year in passing four different bills to tackle the state's budget and deficit in a way that hasn't been done in the past. And they did it because it was clear that nothing would get done except if it was done in a really bipartisan way from the outset. In Maine, you had two candidates, Ken Ackley and Owen Casas, run for the state legislature as independents since they were elected. Three others, one Republican, two Democrats, unaffiliated and now joined them as independents. No bill can pass without some bipartisan support. You know, one party can't just ram through their agenda. So we're seeing bubbling up from the state legislatures and including what we hope to do here in Colorado in 2018 with, with the Centrist Project that we'll have a model of true governance where independents can build those bridges and to make sure that it's clear that one party or the other just can't ram through their agenda. Uh, and we saw that you know, in healthcare, for example. From the outset, uh, the president and Republicans were focused on what can we get done with our 52 votes? And the answer was nothing. And we wasted a lot of time trying to figure that out. If from the outset it was clear that neither party had a majority, but they had to come to the middle to find some agreement, uh, I think we'd see a lot more progress in our politics. Next from Michigan is Catherine, Democrats Line, with Nick Troiano, who's joining us from Denver. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning. I want to clarify something. Like Ted, I have been, I'm 62, and I've been a Democrat my whole life, but I follow Bernie Sanders, and I believe in his whole democratic socialism. And I think that this centrist idea is crazy because both of those parties, Democrat and Republican, are corporate parties. They, they get their money and their funding from corporations, and they do whatever corporations want. And what happened for me is I did a Dem exit. I didn't know which thing to call on because I'm certainly not a centrist. 
I think there are a lot of people, many more than this man is saying, that are more democratic, socialist, or whatever. Those are just labels. But that believe in a progressive agenda. That they want to see what's happening, like, okay, health care. The cost of health care is outrageous in this country. I'm a teacher. I know that my school, it costs a tremendous amount of money to pay for health care. Those kinds of things should be addressed with a single-payer, Medicare for All, or something like that to drive down these costs. We'll get a response. Thank you very much. Well, I want to be clear that, you know, being a centrist means championing the best ideas from both sides. That includes some ideas that Bernie Sanders may have uh, championed during the campaign or some ideas that Republicans have been. Being an independent means thinking for ourselves and being able to evaluate those ideas regardless of partisanship or ideology, which positions centrists, I think, to build a coalition among people uh, to get things done. Um, and I think that's the really important point uh, to realize, that being you know, centrist isn't about ideology in itself. It really is about being independent-minded. Our last call with our remaining minute or so is Ainida from St. Louis, Missouri. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. You're next. Um, I would like to make a comment and ask a question. You have about a and minute, so be brief. Okay. Um, first of all, the Trump children weren't able to vote in the primary for their father. I think any time public monies are used, we ought to be able to vote. And second, I'd like to know what Rick thinks about Citizens United and the fact that the Supreme Court gave corporations the rights of people. And lastly, how can I get in touch with him and join this movement to help in the state of Missouri? Thank you. Thank you for the call. Nick Troiano. Let me tackle the last question first. Uh, centristproject.org is the website. Uh, we're recruiting founding members of the organization. If you go to centristproject.org slash members, these are small dollar donors who are building the infrastructure and powering the whole movement. Um, I agree with the caller that in addition to electing independents, and because that we can elect independent candidates, we need to focus on structural political reforms opening our primaries to all voters, ending the system of partisan gerrymandering, reforming our system of campaign finance so that we introduce some new competition, we introduce new accountability to our political process so that the incentives that our elected leaders have in office are oriented around actually representing the people and solving problems. These are complementary strategies. There are many other organizations out there working on them. So whether you get involved with the Centrist Project or something else, what I want to do is encourage viewers to focus on fundamental reform of our system because in order to tackle any of the issues we care about, we have to get governance right. Nick Troiano, who is the executive director of the Centrist Project, he is joining us on this Sunday from Denver. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me.